Um, welcome, everyone. Um, my husband and I are acclimated to the time zone, fortunately. We just spent three weeks in Thailand. So I've done a lot of communication there. Sawadika. That's <laughs> welcome, good day, good morning. And um, so welcome to all of you. Um, I was interested in Mr. Chan's remarks this morning, his ABCs. Uh, collaboration because we need everyone and so this is about collaboration um, I'm not going to be talking about techniques I really thought Mary's technique when she talked a little bit about gathering the collaborative wisdom she um, gave some ideas about some techniques um, and I thought they were really interesting but this is not about that it is not about technology and it looks like there's a lot of really good presentations here um, that are going to touch on uh, it, useful and important technologies for Agile. Um, and, and I'm not really talking about Agile or Agile roles, although you'll see we will be using the labels for Agile roles for context mostly, um, because I thought you might, some of you might be comfortable with those roles as being familiar. Um, what we are going to be talking about is people. And I do have some glare on my glasses, but I suspect everybody in this room is already an expert in being a people. So that's good. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite you uh, on a journey. Um, and we're going to be setting up a meeting. But everybody in the room is, has an active role, just so you know. <laughs> many of you, all, well, many, many of you, probably most of the people in the room are going to be um, active observers, and you will have an important role when we um, start talking about what went on in the meeting, because we want to discover what happens when you interact with people. A few of you are going to have some uh, roles to play. And roles, these are play roles. There's nothing I have. I have cards. So you get to be somebody with a label. But more importantly, on the back of the card, for you and you alone, is a description of who you are. Uh, you could be a product owner, but you could be anybody because this is really the important context on the back as to who you are. And so I need um, four people to help us make this whole meeting come alive because um, we are going to be talking about the interaction model uh, from Virginia Satir. And Virginia Satir was a family therapist. Um, her focus really was on the fact that people interact with one another in families. Uh, you, you can't really help someone in isolation because as you grow up, you really become who you are based on how you've uh, interacted with your family and your family interacted with you. And um, so, she, she kind of developed this set of patterns or models where she realized that she would see the same things over and over again. Um, I was fortunate enough to learn about her work years ago, back in 1993, um, from Jerry Weinberg, and later um, also spent some time with Virginia Satir. Uh, I was one of, some of, someone came up to me <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, where are you? Um, and said, I went to the AYE conference. Well, I was one of the 14 consultants who originally uh, started, <laughs> there you are, the AYE conference, which was all about using, um, get, get, making people aware of some of the uh, important aspects of how you as a human being, how you as an individual uh, can become more aware of how you can be more effective. And so we're, we're going to talk a little bit about that as we look at the uh, interaction model from Virginia. Um, but 
part of doing that and part of the spirit that Virginia was very much um, in favor of and many of her techniques were uh, looking at making things come alive, doing a sculpture, doing, you know, where people actually act out a role. And the nice thing about these roles that you act out, uh, you're going to be making up the script. So all of you, I assume, were children. And some of you as children may have played and pretended you were an astronaut or pretended you were a nurse or a doctor or something else. That's all we're doing here. So there are no wrong scripts. There are no, no wrong words. <clears throat> so, and for those courageous people um, that do play the roles in front of the entire group, um, three years ago, Six years ago now, I'm trying to remember when it was, I went to a tier conference in Hong Kong and um, the woman who owns and runs the um, Hong Kong Satir Center made up these beautiful um, bookmarks. Each one of them has a different Satir saying, so some of you that play those roles will be, uh, be able to choose yours. Okay, so... Um, to start with, I need then four volunteers who would like to be somebody at the meeting. And um, as I said, there are no, there's nothing wrong. You, you can't do anything wrong. You just have to be able to stand up here. And you can stand this way if you want to. <laughs> um, but... Uh, just enough so that all the rest of the people in the audience can listen to what you make up as a meeting. And probably most of you have been in a meeting of some sort, so whether it's an agile meeting or not. The context for our meeting is this is a meeting where the company we work for has a, an app for an ocean simulator, simulating the currents and the trends and all of that. You have some lovely ocean here in Singapore. And um, so the business has decided they wanted a new feature in that app that has to do with whale migration. So you're going to be talking about what you think you're going to do. Once again, you can go back to, oh, are you going to be a volunteer? Thank you. Yay. Come up, please. Yes. Okay, I'm going to make you the uh, one. Nice to meet you. Yeah, um, I'm going to let you pick your role. Do you want to be a team member, a product owner, a scrum master? I want to be the team member two. Team member two. Okay, so this is you keep that to yourself because that's who you are. Oh, good. I have four. I have my four. <laughs> nice to meet. Harsh. Nice to meet you. I knew a harsh. Yang? Yangtze. Yeah. Yangtze. Yeah. Kulawat. Cool. Uh, Kulawat. Kulawat. Now that I see your name, yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to just take you in order. Do you want to pick which one you think you might want to be? Team member. Team member? Uh, be the Scrum Master. Scrum Master, product owner. Okay. So when you flip it over, you have a description of who you are in this role that you're playing. Uh, obviously, you're not playing yourself. You're Yep. being that person. And so whatever you say is just going to fit with whoever that person is on that back, um, who could be anyone. So um, let, me, let me do this. I need, oh, we have some mics. That's so nice. And we can pass it around. They're your product owner, your scrum master, scrum master. OK. The play is about to begin. Who's one? one oh, you have two. Okay, one took two. There you go. <laughs> and you're one, Harsh. You. Okay. And we have a mic so that we can pass that around. I think what I would like to do, because maybe I'll just shut this this way, uh, but of course that's not going to work. Cause go to sleep. Uh, what I'd like you to do is um, come, I know there's a little bit more light, but come together. And if you all want to be on that end, that's okay, too. 
And uh, yeah, so you can go over there, and then you'll be close to the mic um, <laughs> that the product owner has. Right, the product owner has the mic, so. Um, Scrum Master, yes. and I know I put this in a place where it's going to be part of your hair. Wait a minute. Oh. Yeah, you're stuck. <laughs> so find a place for that that works. So Scrum Master, why don't you bring the meeting to order for the new whale feature. Okay, hi guys. Um, hope you guys are doing well. Um, so uh, we're going to start our sprint today. So today we're going to have our um, you know, feature kickoff for our new whale feature. Um, so I think we're expecting to release this feature uh, as according to the release plan uh, in six weeks. So um, I think you know it would be great if everyone kept that uh, deadline in mind that you know we we have to release in six weeks. So I think I would appreciate everybody's help in you know really kind of making the prioritizations and making sure that we get you know all the top features and you know um, get that release out in six weeks. Cool. You know, we've been talking about this feature for a long time, and our, the future of our company depends on this release. You know, it's, it's been, in the past six months, it's been a hard work, and I understand, but if you just help putting some, a little more extra effort <laughs> to, to make this happen, I really, uh, our boss will really appreciate it, and, and I know that uh, I can trust this. Our excellent Scrum Master can make sure that we keep burning it down. <laughs> okay, be before we start, just wanted to understand how the status would be reported uh, to the higher management and uh, who would be managing the budgets and all. That's something I want to understand before we initiate the sprints and all. Um. If you have any question, go ask Scrum Master first. If, he, if she cannot handle it, she, she, she show you where to find me. <laughs> Sorry, can I understand what your concern is? So I think you wanted to know uh, who, who is in charge of the budget. Yes. And the other question was? That how would we uh, reporting the starters? How would we like, uh, tracking it, the progress about the uh, project and all? All right. So, so you know, as as per kind of you know how we work in this company, um, you know, we have our two week sprints. So, you know, so six weeks, two weeks, um, down to our release. Um, you know, every two weeks we'll, you know, look at our burn down and see, um, you know, whether we are doing well or not. Um, whether you know we ha we can cover all the features that we need for this release. Um, so you know, um, I think the I think the product owner you will be in charge of the budget actually, right? So the budget goes to the product owner, and then um, you know, as a team, we're accountable to him, um, and you know, also to each other to make sure that we do our best to uh, get the product out. And I'll make sure I'll come and see the burn down every day. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, sorry, did you want to? Are we done reading? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all we need to do now is to prioritize the features. So, uh, product owner, do you have a prioritization that, um, can you show us a prioritization? Well, it's the same priority that we've been talking for the last six months, just follow that and make it happen. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, so so uh, is everyone comfortable with the prioritization? Do we feel that we can complete this? Yes, we can go through it. No worries. <laughs> Have you agreed on anything? <laughs> Have you agreed on anything? Have you agreed on anything? We agree to make it work, of course. <laughs> you know, our, our future, the future of company depends on it. It has to work. But I still feel that the time you're giving for testing for this app, it's too less because uh, we need to do the regression, we need to do all the other things because we're adding the new features and uh, it may impact the existing functionality and all. So we should think about the timelines uh, because we are already discussing the last six months and now we are coming with the six sprints only. So one sprint is only will take for solutioning and four sprints I, I, I feel that it would take a development and I left I will be left uh, left with only one sprint for testing that would not be a suitable time 
Yeah, so um, maybe maybe if I interject now, so I think, um, you know, product owner, you have already prioritized the features, right, in the list of priority for you and for the business. So I think, you know, given that we, we don't think there is enough time to finish all these features, um, I think, you know, part of our agreement with Scrum is that, you know, we will finish the highest priorities mm -hmm. and you're free to come in to, you know, to reprioritize, but, you know, um, it's, it's, you know, I think uh, our velocity is, is we're, we're doing well right now, and uh, I, I don't think our velocity is unlikely to change from the work that we've been doing in the past few months. So, you know, realistically, um, it does seem that um, out of all the features that you have prioritized, maybe um, I think five will be done. So is that an acceptable thing for you? But, you know, we're not here to do Scrum, we're here to do software, right? <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm sure it, it would help, but yeah, you know, if, if we can make this work, there will be no work to do in the future. So I um, trust you guys will do your best. So let's do one thing. Let's uh, break out this uh, whole, release in the, uh, like, whole release in different parts of release. Let's not target to send all the features in one shot. Let's break it down in different releases. That may also help us out. Will the business uh, okay with that or uh, you can do the buy-in with the business? Yeah, so out of the, I think out of the seven features that you prioritize, maybe we can do five first for in six weeks, and then we'll save the two for the rest, right? Okay, I'm gonna come to the end of the meeting. And I'll hold on to that mic, because I'm gonna ask uh, for some impressions. And I thought, I know what I wrote on that card. I think you did a great job. <laughs> Very impressed. Let's see what our observers, I want to uh, get a little bit of information, you know, just a couple observations. Anybody have observations about what they thought that interaction was all about? What were these, were these people communicating? Any stumbles that you noticed? Yes? Um, some of them are really collaborating with each other. Which which one was just sitting there? The gentleman over there, <laughs> team member two. Very good job, team member two. Why don't you read your role so now you'll have a little more insight? For T two, I have a baby that is a few months old. Uh, me and my spouse has been late at night, taking turns to tend to her. I'm very sleepy and tired. It's hard for me to focus on the conversation. Yeah, so um, she, <laughs> so he was falling down on his knees, his head was, but in the meeting, it's very, if you're in the meeting and you don't know that background, it's not unusual for somebody to think, that guy's not doing anything. Why is he not participating? This isn't right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Other observation about one of our other members. Yes. So the product owner didn't seem to be very much interested in participating with the team. He kind of had to be coerced. So product owner, why don't you read a little bit about who you are? Product owner, the owner of the company has put a lot of pressure on you personally to make sure that this new product will be a success. You have been working with marketing, sales, and financial people in addition to this role with the development team. You believe it is the role of the Scrum Master to push things through and make it all happen. <laughs> yeah, so he, uh, he was pushing and he, it was like, why are you doing this Scrum thing? Why don't you just develop software? Get it out there. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <laughs> what about our other two members here? Maybe we were neutral. <laughs> more, more neutral, more neutral. <laughs> yes. I think that team uh, number one saw a lot of obstacles. I want to know a lot of stuff that might not be relevant for the Yeah, team, team member one seemed to be asking a lot of questions, maybe throwing obstacles in front of the team uh, that didn't seem relevant. So team member one, why don't you read your role? So my role says that I have five years experience as a project manager 
and I'm pretty new to the Agile and I don't know who is actually sponsoring this project and uh, how the status will get reported to the hub. senior management. That's my role. So he, so he asks a lot of questions to try and figure out where he fits in. Okay. Um, what about our Scrum Master? Good Scrum Master? <laughs> Pretty good Scrum Master, yeah. Well, Scrum Master, why don't you uh, read a little bit about your role? You, were, you seemed very energetic to me. <laughs> yeah. I have accepted a terrific new position in another company that will be a step up for my career. So I'm excited, and, but I have not announced yet I will be leaving, but a new position is on my mind. Um, I just want to finish the work with the team for the next release, which is you know, only six weeks away. So I'm trying to really stay focused and get the work done for the release. Yeah. So now what I'd like to do, keeping the mic with the team, the, our, our meeting members up here, what I'd like you to do is go down the line, talk a little bit about your experience of being in this meeting. How were you feeling about the other people in the meeting? I mean, you knew you had a role, but what, what do you think was going on? If I have to, uh, I'm wearing the I'm wearing the product owner hat. It feel like the team doesn't feel the pressure. <laughs> team is not responding to the importance. Yeah. Um, I felt like I was caught between the product owner and the team. So, like on one hand, I did you know I wanted to address the concerns of the team, but on the other hand, there is this kind of pressure to to get the product out. Yeah. I feel that product owner doesn't need to listen to anything. He just wants to implement in six weeks, no matter how it would be. <laughs> and I have a team member who is not interested in supporting me. <laughs> <laughs> what was, okay, yeah. I just want the meeting to open over. <laughs> <laughs> there was all this kind of bickering or something going on, yeah. Uh, right, so, um, I want to thank you all. Wait, you cannot leave. Um, so pick a color, any color. Thank you so much for, for doing this. Thank you. Uh-huh. Green. And I will hold on to the other one. So, um, and I, oh, Scrum Master. Oh, and the car. <laughs> the sticky thing, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. That was very good. Thank you. Okay, so we saw um, that there was, it was easy to kind of misunderstand what was potentially going on in the meeting, and I'm sure you've been in some meetings like that yourself. Um, so oh, somebody's password, is she pink here? <laughs> I'm sorry to let it sleep for so long. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the Satir interaction model and what she observed, thank you, about the um, what really goes on. So this is what she noticed. She said when she saw people interacting, if she kind of slowed it down, that people would say something. If you're in the same room, you observe facial expressions, body postures, things like that. So the first step was, what, what did I hear? What did I see? Hopefully not what did I smell, but you could use all of your senses to interpret what, you know, to take in the information. Secondly, okay, I've got this information, what meaning do I make of it? What does that mean? Could be innocuous, it could be something that seems like it has hidden meanings. It could be something else. I might ask, well, is there any other meaning I could make other than the one I kind of came to quickly, like the team member who wasn't participating? <laughs> What's going on for that person that um, seems to have them tuned out? Next step was, how do I feel about that? So I'm going to pick on our team member two again. So how do I feel about that person not participating? 
but I don't know what was going on for that person. So I'm going to have some feeling about that. Is it okay? We're not okay. And then lastly, what rules do I have to respond if I'm going to respond to something that was just said? And that those set of rules are based on um, the way your family brought you up, your culture, and your own personal experience. All of those things play into how we form rules about what's permissible to say or do and what is not. Um, and then you respond. So if I took an interaction that I thought was troubling and slowed it down, you know, what might I discover? And furthermore, um, keep in mind this is going on for each person. So my first person is hearing something, um, saying, well, what is all the data that I have? What meaning do I make of that? Are there other meanings? How do I feel about that? If I don't feel OK about it, I could have a pretty angry response. I, I would be surprised. One of the things that um, in, in taking Virginia Satir's work and using it in the workplace, well, we're all people. We're all human beings. We had some people who cared for us as we were brought up and helped form those rules and experiences. And we carry that to the workplace. Almost everybody does, because those are the rules and those are the experiences you know. And so when you think about how does a family therapist's work apply in the workplace, it applies because a workplace is a collection of people. And there are a collection of people that you work with that come from different places. Um, I know that as I went from working in an office where I was face to face with my friends and colleague, colleagues to working more and more and more online and more and more and more and more across the world, um, it, that was very hard for me because I like face to face communication, being able to see people um, go have a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, something to talk about and learn who that person is. And that all helps us, um, I think, become more effective in terms of how we interact with people. Um, and learning sometimes that something that you do is really annoying to somebody else. I remember when uh, there was a time when I'm sure there were a number of people that uh, described me as annoying. I'm fairly outgoing, fairly extroverted, um, and usually pretty energetic, particularly when I was younger. And um, I remember being in a workshop with a woman who I just got this vibe that she might positively hate me, even though I know she didn't really know who I was. And she was reacting, as it turned, I learned over the course of the week, she was reacting to my exuberance and my willingness to jump in and say something. And she was much more introverted. And it was a huge lesson for me uh, because I began to appreciate that uh, it's not important to put the energy in. Everybody brings the energy, and it's important to respect um, other people's points of view. Um, so this interaction model, there's ways that you can think about applying this. Number one, the banner is listen without prejudice. Um, that's very hard, by the way, because we all have these built-in perspectives and filters that tell us um, what we think we're going to think about something or the way that we might feel or react to things. But keep in mind that going through that process of those steps could be very quick for some people because the issue may not be a, a, a big significant one or it could be very long so it might take somebody a longer time to respond. Doesn't mean they're not interested, it means they're thinking about it maybe going through the steps in their own mind. You might 
if you feel friction in that interaction, you might think about, well, what is really going on here? Um, and maybe think about those four stages in your own mind and say, what did I hear? Did I miss something? What, what meaning did I make? Is there something else I could make? What feeling? Is that feeling okay or not okay? And do I have rules that might be blinding me to other ways to work through the interactions with people? Um, you could verify with people. Did, did you really, when you said X, Y, Z, did you mean this or did you mean that? So you could ask questions. Questions help clarify so that you're not misinterpreting. Um, and that sometimes can lead to um, a kind of a better understanding. And remember, just like our meeting up here, intent is invisible. There is so much that is invisible. Uh, when you interact with people. So assumptions, you know, can get you in trouble. Experiences that we've had color our interactions. Um, so the woman that decided that I was jumping in too quickly, it turned out when I talked with her more thoroughly at the end of the week, when both of us kind of calmed down, <laughs> Um, she worked in an environment where she was dismissed a lot. Other people were talking over her a lot. She felt like nobody gave her the space to enter and say what she had and what she could bring to the table. Um, and that was big when I realized that I was triggering all of these bad experiences that she had. That was a big lesson for me. Um, so you, you basically can expand your self-awareness of what you might be doing. Uh, my interaction with Jenny, um, who at the end of the week, um, we joked about it, but she called me the <laughs> locomotive <laughs> coming through the station. Um, but once you're aware of that, you can do things differently, and what can I do to change the interaction? One of the best things, um, and it, this is a little mantra that I say to myself often when I find myself in a situation where things seem tense um, because I'm reacting maybe poorly to what someone has said, particularly if I'm on the phone and I can't see somebody's face and I don't know everything that's going on. Um, and, and Jerry used to say, what Jerry Weinberg used to say, what people say is more often about them than it is about you, which also means that what you say <laughs> is about you and um, you know how you represent. But, um, but that keeps me from uh, jumping the gun and thinking, going back and thinking and slowing things down. So that is the Satir interaction model and some advice on how you can use that when you're in meetings. Um, and I think I have five minutes left for questions. Thank you everyone, by the way, for, um, for participating, for listening, for being observers. And um, what questions do you have? Yes. This one. The process. Yes. So, is this working? I don't think it's on. I don't think it's working either. Okay. Um, so, in this funnel, if I have, uh, for example, let's if we talk about abortion and someone has a very very emotional response. Yes. Where does the response kick in? Is it in? How do I feel about that, or what rules do I well, have? Well, everything that you're doing here, whether you're forming the meaning, whether you're thinking about the meaning, whether you're thinking about your feeling, and you can move through these fairly quickly. So if I think you said, what if somebody was talking about abortion? Is that what you said? A controversial topic. Co controversial topic like that. Um, there's going to be some, some probably very fast movement through here. And the response is basically formed on um, what, what are my rules and experiences uh, that allow me to say something because I might be very angry. 
and have a very strong feeling, but I might not feel like I'm permitted to say what I really feel. So, but the res but that's that's your response is formed right here. Okay. Does this imply that the feeling is formed before the response? The feeling comes before the response. Yeah. So usually it's people try to make some meaning of that. What was going on? and then they might check in with how they feel. Some people who go more on an intellectual mode might think the meaning is more important and jump right through to response. Some people who, where the um, emotional part is more important might not worry about the meaning as much as how they feel about it. So people will emphasize also different stages. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Other questions? I did give this presentation, by the way, um, in a PDF format to um, Stanley, and hopefully it will be shared with the rest of the Agile volunteers who might post it somewhere if they're going to keep the pages up um, so that you could uh, take a look at it, too. Any other questions? Yes. yes. Oh, sorry. Juan. My question is about the prejudice. Uh, is it? My question is about the prejudice. Is it a tactic or method that you can help to shape us how to be less prejudiced? Without prejudice, yeah. Yeah, but um, kind of like it's the it's the experience. It's the whole person. Yeah. Way. I th I think um, one of the things. Um, one of the things that you can consider is this might be something else. You know, this I'm interpreting a meaning based on my experiences and my uh, thought a process about what was going on. But there could be another meaning because I don't know that person and I don't know what's going on for them. So I want to remain open. So I think listening without prejudice is remaining open to other possibilities. Um, and when there's a lot of emotion involved, I think it, that's hard. So that's when you kind of need to, I have learned through my interaction with Jenny, where I was the steam engine, <laughs> um, I learned to try to remember to slow down and take a couple breaths put the mute button on my phone <laughs> if I'm in a meeting um, and just uh, let things um, slow down a little bit. That helps. Yeah. Other questions? I think I'm at the time. I have one minute if there is someone else or would you like to do the wrap up? Okay, thank you, Becky. Uh, thank you all participating to this session.